Coming up on the list, how to make your backyard the perfect getaway. Landscape lighting can be a really cost-effective way to create details within your backyard. Plus, the musical genius of David Letterman's co-star. First time I opened my mouth on camera, he said, that was great, do more of that. But first, find out how easy RV camping can be. Somebody like you can certainly do it. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey guys, I'm Christina Guerrero. Well, it is vacation season, and a lot of folks are hitting the road in an RV. It gives you the option of beaches, national parks, landmarks, or all of the above, all in a portable, child, and dog-friendly place on wheels. Now, if you're thinking of going this route, well, here are a few things to know before renting an RV. And that's our featured story at the top of the list. According to the website RVShare.com, bookings of recreational vehicles are already up 40% from last year. When you have a vehicle like this, you can have more fun, you can slow down, you can enjoy. You don't have to stay parked in just one place. You can kind of go from a variety of different locations. RV sharing websites are like the Airbnb of the open road, where RV owners let you rent their vehicle. The owner came out and taught me everything I needed to know, took me for a couple practice laps around my neighborhood. Of course, one size doesn't fit all, so Emily Kaufman, aka the Travel Mom, is telling us a few things you need to know before you rent your hotel on wheels. First, figure out your specs. Is there a kitchen? How many people does it sleep? Do I need to know about the water? Are there showers and toilets? Is there anything else I need to understand before I drive off. What's yeah. the plumbing like? Am I gonna have to do that or is that something I can give to my husband? I'm usually a ding dong when it comes to this stuff. The owners walk you through and take you through everything and it's surprisingly easy to connect power and to connect your water. If somebody like me can do it, somebody like you can certainly do it. Next, map out where you're camping. Our national parks all require reservations ahead of time. Oh. You also have to purchase a national park pass in okay. order to go, you can't just show up. Each state is different and many of the state campgrounds require reservations as well. Let's say we decide to go for a ride, we're out in the middle of nowhere and we need to know where we go for the night. What do you recommend? You know, I always say make technology your travel companion and there are apps that can help you find last minute campsites. Emily recommends Spot Tonight or Camp Spot. Or if you really wanna be off the grid, Emily suggests boondocking, which means? You can go into public land, Bureau of Land Management land and camp out there without hookups, meaning no power and no water. And a lot of people do that, and a lot of these vans are equipped for you to be able to do that as well with generator and water supply. Lastly, check the mileage arrangements on your rental. Make sure you know what your maximum is and make sure that you're planning your trip accordingly. The beauty of RV Share is you know that ahead of time because the filters will tell you if you have unlimited mileage, kind of like a rental car, if there's limited, maybe around 100 miles. So check out all that information ahead of time. With the high gas prices, you might also want to check if there's an option to have your rental delivered directly to the campground. Taking it easy in your RV is at the top of the list. Let's give this guy a spin. Yeah, let's go take it for a drive. Of course, you don't have to drive to the great outdoors to enjoy the outdoors. Not if you jazz up your backyard a bit. Jackie Danker has ways to turn that space into a summer paradise. Warmer weather means it's time to get outside. Summer only lasts for so long. Outdoor living areas is the best place to start to really maximize your outdoor living possibilities. We spoke with interior designer James Judge to learn how to prep our backyard for summer. And it starts with a focal point. Something that you can see from inside that's gonna draw you to the exterior and make you wanna stay there for a while. So one of my favorites is adding a water feature. A fountain can add so much to a patio space, not only adding a great noise, but also making a place that feels almost therapeutic and spa-like. And depending on the layout, potentially adding a pergola in the back corner will also create a focal point that draws you to the back. Something that really helps to add a little bit of pizzazz to your yard while adding additional functionality too. Next, include landscape lighting. Landscape lighting can be a really cost-effective way to create such beautiful lighting and details within your backyard. Check out your local hardware store and so many of them have great landscape lighting kits. 
for you to actually add lights along a pathway that leads you to your focal points. There's great spotlights to really focus on highlighting the architecture of your home and your plantings too. James's third tip, update your fence. A fresh coat of paint can go a long way to really bring a lot of color and refinement to your backyard. One of my favorite tricks is to use faux ficus panels. You can actually literally layer these right over the top of the fencing and it creates this great greenery and really adds so much texture and privacy too. Find it at major retailers or online at fencescreen.com. Finally, add gathering points. Oftentimes a fire pit is a great way to do this because it brings everyone together and you can really focus on that space and spending time with others. Another great way to do this though is think about outdoor dining. Bringing in a large outdoor patio table with mismatched chairs or even great long benches can really create a great place for people to be together and that's what summer's all about. We're making the most of the sunshine in our summer ready backyard. You hear a lot of people talk about the value of kindness these days, and why not? It's easy, it doesn't have to cost money, and along with making life pleasant, Hattie Dijamal tells us it may even improve your health. If you're having a crummy day and someone does something that brightens your spirits, it can change your mood. There's an amazing, incredible impact that kindness can have on all dimensions of health. People just don't think about it that way. Lisa Charles, CEO of Embrace Your Fitness, shares a few ways that being nice to those around you may benefit your health. For starters, kindness can improve your mental well-being. One of the key components to um, being kind is really what happens in the system, what happens internally. It may give you what Lisa says is the helper's high. There's this little uh, connection between your gut and your brain and it heats up and you have this release of something called oxytocin. Oxytocin is called the love hormone. Acts of kindness can also release serotonin and dopamine. That are gonna make you feel so alive and rich and present. Next, doing acts of kindness can improve your physical health. It dilates the blood vessel so it gets us to have better cardiovascular health. So blood pressure decreases and cortisol, the stress hormone, goes down. We are less anxious, we're less depressed, we're less sad. So taking the time to do something positive for someone else may increase your energy levels and... You are making so many new neural pathways and connections which means you are growing your brain. Gray matter, white matter, you're not static and shrinking. And this obviously is gonna be very, very, very helpful in memory. Finally, being kind may increase your self-esteem. There was a wonderful study and it was really done in the Journal of Adolescence, but it doesn't limit itself to adolescence. The study linked acts of kindness to friends, family, and strangers to kids' self-esteem. Their self-competency level went sky high. So that means they were really competent in all ranges of things, from academics to their social to their emotional awareness. This gave the kids a really good sense of who they were from the inside out. You start to really, for yourself, acknowledge, see, bask in the beauty that really exists around all of us. Making a better world, one act of kindness at a time. Here's what's coming up on The List. Summer jobs giving experiences that could last a lifetime. Once you have the skill set in your back pocket, you can have it on your resume. And tricks to get a picky eater to eat. You give it to them and they love it. Plus, the show's not over. The show Paul Schaefer almost left late night for. I turned down the biggest, most respected and beloved show in the history of television. That's all next on The List. YouTube! Okay, I know you're right in the middle of watching, but I wanted to remind you to hit subscribe. Go ahead. Yes, and also turn on notifications so you don't miss one minute of the list. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. All right, if you had to pinpoint the unofficial day that childhood ends and adulthood begins, well, it's probably the first time a parent tells you it's time to get a job. If you have to work, might as well be fun. So Jimmy Rhodes is running down summer jobs kids will be happy to do. For young people, summertime means school's out and long days with nothing to do lay ahead. And for the people who love them, it means get a job. 
Seriously. Summer jobs are so important for young people. Hey, it's monster career expert Vicki Salemi. They learn soft skills like showing up on time, demonstrating a really strong work ethic. And while you've got your typical summer jobs like working the drive through or waiting tables, there are others that have that wow factor that you just won't be able to get at any other time in your life. We're running down some maybe not so top of mind summer jobs you'll love. Let's start with Camp Counselor. They might have horseback riding, arts and crafts classes, tug of wars, swimming in a lake at midnight, all sorts of things that you most likely will not find in other jobs when you're adulting. Trust me, a midnight dip in the office park retaining pond is a guaranteed trip to HR. Let's get the inside scoop from Andy Pritikin, the owner and director of Liberty Lake Day Camp. Working at summer camp allows you to reacquaint yourself with nature and disconnect from all those screens. But we've been trapped indoors. We're an indoor society at this point. The fact is that that most of the world is outdoors and it's amazing and it's beautiful and it calms and restores. Let's get outside this summer. And about those soft skills. Working at summer camp is leadership boot camp that you can only learn by being responsible for a group of kids and you can be their summer camp hero. If you can manage a group of third graders, you can do anything in life. Just think back to that nervous tick your third grade teacher had by the end of the day. But wait, there's more. What makes it extra cool is the fact that you're not at home. You're most likely out of town, maybe remote, rustic, in the cabin. It's got a whole je ne sais quoi. Meaning, I don't know what. Proving once again that everything sounds better in French. Vicky's one caveat. Bring bug spray. Parce que les perriques de mesquites sont les pires. The next great summer job, be a barista. Barista jobs are great, first and foremost, because you could take that job anywhere. Because even a lot of smaller towns have fancy coffee places now. If you're going from one city to another, once you have the skill set in your back pocket, you can have it on your resume and ace that interview. It's essentially what learning to tend bar used to be with one big added bonus when it comes to your clientele. They're sober. Next, think about becoming a dog walker. You'll get some exercise as you're walking those dogs, breathe some fresh air, but also punctuality, customer service, communication skills, all rolled up into one. As for the pay, it can range depend if you're working for an agency or doing it on your own as an entrepreneur. So although a main perk is the unconditional love that you'll get from these dogs, make sure that you're also making some money. Finally, and this is what I did through college, check your city's job board. Think about park and rec jobs. You can work as a lifeguard, umpire, Hire local ball games, be outside, and you're learning skills in the process, but you're also having fun. Hey, any job can be great or awful, so why not look for something unique? These summer jobs are off the beaten path. Look for them now before they're going, going, gone. And those are summer jobs you'll remember forever. Well, it is bad enough when you can't find your keys or your phone, but when you lose something truly meaningful, well, that's even worse. Teresa Strasser shares a few recent reunion stories that should put a smile on your face. Teresa, thank you. These remarkable reunions are filled with so much love that we just had to share them with you. Coming in at number one, Mill Creek, Utah's Holly Shear was recently reunited with her biological son after being separated for 20 years. It's been nothing but sweet, to be honest. She was only 15 years old when she gave birth to a baby boy. When I was about five months pregnant is when I decided that it, I was gonna place him up for adoption. It was the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Benjamin always asked about his biological mother while he was growing up and on his 20th birthday, Holly reached out to him on Facebook. At first I didn't know who she was, but when I asked and she told me who she was, it was, it was a stellar moment. And two days after that message, they all reconnected over dinner. It happened when I was least expecting it, but when I most needed it. And it turns out, get this, they work at the same hospital. It's crazy how the world works sometimes. At number two, United States Army Specialist Trinity O'Brien recently reunited with her eight, yes, eight siblings, surprising each of them at their Sterling Heights, Michigan schools. <laughs> Trinity had been stationed in Germany and hasn't seen her family in over 16 months. Hi! You're stationed overseas and stuff, it's a whole different lifestyle. You, you don't have family and anybody over there. And sometimes like you think, like, am I going to come home? Like, are people going to remember me? The best feeling ever. But they had a huge homecoming party. And third on our lovely reunions list, after surviving the war in Ukraine for over three months, Grandma Ludmilla was finally reunited with her family in Colorado. She recently escaped Mariupol, one of the hardest hit cities in the war, and her own apartment building was destroyed in an attack. 
We thought she was dead. She forced her way on the bus, the last UN bus. It's totally amazing that she did it all herself. She escaped herself. And now the whole family is cherishing their time together. Yeah, she's so happy. It's a miracle. We have to agree. And those were three inspirational reunions that we just had to share. Lots more to come on the list. Stay right here. We're back. Okay, if you're a fan of David Letterman, well, you're likely a fan of Paul Schaefer, too, since he was the late-night talk show host's right-hand man for more than 30 years. Hattie Dijamal caught up with the legendary band leader and found out a few things you probably didn't know about him on the hot list. Now, say hello to Paul Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen, and the world's most dangerous band. Paul Schaefer was David Letterman's musical director, band leader, and sidekick on the entire run of both of his late night shows from 1982 to 2015. 33 years. I believe it. He is a Grammy Award winner. He is our musical director and most importantly, a good friend. And he was recently honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Wharton Institute for the Performing Arts. Kind of overwhelmed, as you can see. It leaves me a little speechless. It certainly is a wonderful honor and kind of humbling, if you don't mind my saying so. The 72-year-old musical legend told us a few things you might not know about him. You're a musical genius. Uh, you've worked with everybody important in music for Geez, 40 years at least, maybe longer. I've had a great run. Starting with the fact that he was almost cast on one of the biggest shows of all time, Seinfeld. You gotta be kidding me! I was certainly offered a role in that show. Maybe it's funny for you. My accountant doesn't think it's that funny. <laughs> I got a call from a production company saying we're doing a new show with Jerry Seinfeld. He wants you to be his sidekick. And I said, Seinfeld, please. No, I didn't really, but basically the story is true. And I turned down the biggest, you know, the most respected and beloved show in the history of television. Next, why David Letterman was the key to his success in Late Night. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Is it show over? The show is not over. How generous he was and encouraging to me. First time I opened my mouth on camera, he said, that was great, do more of that, you know? And he continued to be like that for the whole 33 years. So I'll, I'll never forget that. That's it. it was wonderful. Thanks for letting me do it. I'll never be able to repay you for uh, everything. Thank you, David. Same goes for me. Finally, Paul co-wrote the Grammy-nominated number one dance hit, It's Rain and Men. And have we got no but Barbara Streisand, Diana Ross, Cher, and other famous names turned it down. Donna Summer turned it down. I and my uh, co-writer, the great genius Paul Jabara, who had the original idea, let's write a song called It's Raining Men, for Donna Summer. She hated it when we finally wrote it and he presented it to her. And that's when he went on to present it to Barbara, Diana, Patti LaBelle might be on that list too. They all hated it. The Weather Girls said yes, and the rest is as they say, history. Are they still playing that song crazily at that? Yeah! Paul Schaefer on the hot list. We'll be right back. Welcome back. While cooking dinner can be a pain, cooking for kids can be more like a migraine. Don't worry, Jimmy Rhodes has tips to take the chaos out of cooking for kids. Sometimes cooking dinner for your kids feels like another job. It's just this ongoing battle, and a lot of times kids just need to be exposed to things, have some fun ways to enjoy them, and get involved in the kitchen, and then you'll see that they're not as picky. We're leaving the stress of cooking for your kids behind with Jillian Barkum, registered dietitian and owner of the What's for Dinner Club. Our first tip is to deconstruct the meal. So say you're making a pasta dish that has pasta in it along with some veggies, maybe some chicken sausage, and you typically throw it in the oven and bake it all, great? Right? Yeah. So do that, but then when you plate it for the kiddos, divide it up. So just like this, we're gonna have the ravioli separate, the zucchini separate, and then the chicken sausage. That way they can pick and choose. Yeah, because some kids are gonna be like, ah, oh, there's sauce touching yeah. my zucchini. I know, they're like something green on my plate and they freak out. Yeah. So if that is your kid, then maybe pull some stuff out before you throw it all together for yourself. So it's the same meal you're making for yourself anyway, you're just keeping 
keeping stuff separate. Exactly. That way, you're, again, you're not making multiple meals for the family. Our next tip is to add in familiar foods your kids love. So maybe some string cheese, some crackers, their favorite fruit or veggies. So you're slowly growing that list of familiar foods that you can use as a, you know, kind of a little enticement later. Exactly. They might sort of peek at some of the foods, try little bites of what you already made, and then feel really good having the foods that they know and love. This is a great trick. This would work. And lastly, add in some dips and sauces. Sauces, dips, you can do seasonings, herbs, lemon juice on things, ways to really spice up the dishes. The best thing I think for kiddos is they want to get involved, just like they want to play in the sandbox, right? Get their hands dirty. Whether it's squeezing lemon on top of something, having a yogurt-based ranch, we were talking about uh, as a healthier ranch, option. Ranch, yes. Ranch makes everything edible to a child. To make your dips more health conscious, swap the ranch with yogurt-based ranch and no sugar added ketchup instead of regular ketchup. Hummus, peanut butter, and marinara sauce are also great options to use for a dip. And you might be surprised. I bet there's some dips and sauces that kiddos will love that you are like, I don't know if they're gonna like this. And you give it to them and they love it. We're giving you dinner time tips for cooking for kids. All great ideas. And also to the parents out there just trying to get your kid to eat a vegetable. I see you. I am you. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for watching YouTube. And don't forget to like this video, leave us a comment down below, and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a list. Now, I picked out some more of my favorites. They're right here just for you.